Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 32 and I'm going to discuss Stokes theorem which is the theorem for curls. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com So in the previous videos 29 through 31 I discussed the fundamental theorem for calculus, the fundamental theorem for gradients and the fundamental theorem for divergences which we call Green's theorem or the divergence theorem. So for this reason we're going to be extending it to talk about the fundamental theorem for curls which we call Stokes theorem. So our revision is as follows. When we spoke about the fundamental theorem for calculus we integrated a derivative namely df dx over the over we'll say one dimension dx and it was the same we found as looking at the value of the function at the endpoints. So then what we did was we extended this into three dimensions. So three dimensions df dx becomes the, the, uh, the gradient and d, dx, we'll say the, the infinitesimal change becomes the infinitesimal change in length or dl which is dx i hat plus dyj hat plus dzk hat and similarly that was just the value of the function at the boundaries. So then we looked at the divergence theorem or Green's theorem and once again it, we integrated a derivative this time it was the, the divergence over a volume and we got the value of the function at the boundary as the, as the answer. This, day, this time it was the boundary of a surface which uh, bounded the, uh, the, the volume. So we can imagine that Green's theorem, excuse me, that Stokes theorem for curls is going to follow the same pattern and I've written it in green. So we're going to be integrating a derivative, this time we're going to be integrating the curl of a function over a surface and the surface we're integrating is dot da, and that might look like a q, it's dot da and it's going to be equal to the value at the boundary and the boundary this time is the path in the closed path integral or closed length integral of f dot dl so that's the mathematics over so just to point out, as always we have the integral of a derivative which is the curl in this case, over a region which in this case is a patch of a surface and it's equal to the value of the function at the boundary and in this case the boundary is the perimeter of the patch. So as in the case of the divergence theorem the boundary term is itself an integral specifically a closed line integral. So you might ask yourself well what use is that? Well the use is is that it essentially it evaluates the amount of curl or rotation in your field. So we're going to be talking about uh, vector fields fine but electric or magnetic or electric or magnetic fields. So it measures the total rotation or curl so let's say for some strange reason we had lots of curling or rotating going on in our field. Say, let's say there were lots of small pieces uh, which were, had their own curl, right? Now the curl is in the same direction, let's say, in general. Okay, what this means, and let's say it's inside a volume here, right? I know it's in two dimensions. But what that means is, in order to calculate the curl, it's the same as just looking at the closed line integral of f dot dl. So instead of looking at the curl of each of these, across the, the area, we're going to go to f dot dl. Why is that? Well, think about this. If we took two of them, let's say we took the two here in the center, right? So here, there, there, there. So they're both, we'll say, curling in the same direction. So I'm going to write them like this just for argument's sake. So let's say at the top. So at the top, they're both curling in the same way. So here, their, their curl is going to add, right? So or your, their, their result is going to add. So we give a, there's a non-zero result there. Here, well, there's nothing also happening here, so we get, okay, there's a non-zero answer here. We get down to here, okay, when we get down to here, there's also addition going on. And when we get up to here, there's also addition going on. Then you might ask yourself, well, what's happening in the center? If you look at the center, when this one goes up, this one goes down. So in the center, there is cancellation. So the point is, just extend this, a small analogy, to all of those, and you'll find all you're left with are the perimeter terms. So that's how we go to your f dot dl. Okay, so um, now the next thing is, we'll say which way does da point? So for a closed, uh, for, for a closed surface, da points in the direction outward normal. But for an open sur surface, well you might wonder which way is out. Well what you need to do is apply the right hand rule. So if your p fingers point in the direction of the line, then the outward normal is in the direction of your thumb. Alright, so that's what we count as positive the positive normal direction. Now finally the really important thing here is there are two corollaries associated with Stokes theorem 
and the corollaries are as follows. If we take the closed line integral, excuse me, the closed surface integral of the curl of our function dot dA, what we find is that this is equal to zero. And why is this? It's zero for any closed surface since the boundary line, like the mouth of balloon or whatever, shrinks down to a point and hence the right hand side of the equation up here goes to zero. That's the first corollary. And the second corollary is that if we take the open integral of the curl of our function integrated dot dA it depends only on the boundary line and not on the particular surface. So it's kind of independent of excuse me, of the surface chosen. And for that reason we, 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 we choose easy surfaces to manipulate with. Okay, so it only depends on the, the we'll say the boundary line rather than the surface the surface chosen. Now finally you might be wondering well, wh when am I going to prove this? I'm not I, I, may, I might have mentioned already I'd like that you went to go to the Khan Academy because that guy has done a better job than I could ever do on the, on these particular videos. So you can find him on YouTube or on his website. So the Khan Academy look up the, the proof of Stokes theorem it's very straightforward. And he's got a very good video on it. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.